Hopkins is a coastal village that's located um, south of Belize City, which is the, the main city where you fly in and out. That's where the international airport is. The little village is very small, um, population is about 1,000. The native population is, is Garifuna. These people are of African descent and um, were descended from survivors of slave shipwrecks. Unlike most of the Belizean population, which is Mayan, um, these are, are, are African, very African, and their roots are, are based in that culture. They're not prosperous at all. I think that fishing is one of their occupations and tourism is beginning to be um, an industry in that area, but it's not as developed as other areas of Belize. The way they used to put the animals to sleep there and the way they did in most of Belize, they would um, indiscriminately poison all the animals when they felt like there was an overpopulation. And they would put out strychnine in the, in the food and just poison the animals and then just go back and pick up the dead ones. They had never had a, a vet in that area and they, it's hard to believe, but there's not very many veterinarians in Belize and they're in the, the bigger areas, you know, the more populated areas. Our typical surgery day um, started for us at probably 5.30 because we were wanting to get up and get going, but what they call Belize time is not our time, so um, <laughs> we would have liked to have started about 8, but we usually got started around 9. They gathered the animals, as many as they could fit in their van, and an expatriate named Steve helped with that also. And so they would go gather animals, bring them back, and then Steve and Raju and Debbie and I would sedate them, weigh them, sedate them, prep them for surgery, and then we kind of just had an assembly line going where we would prep one for surgery, Tina would start surgery, and then we'd get another one ready. And in the meantime, we'd, you know, kind of look at skin things or other issues or, you know, things that cropped up. A couple of days we worked till 5.36 and then stopped for the evening. Our main helper at, the, at our clinic was a, a young Garifuna man named Raju. We know his nickname was Nash, but um, Raju was what we called him. You know, there's different attitudes towards our animals, and definitely that's the message I think that we're trying to get across to people is, um, you know, that, to take better care of them. And especially the children, um, I feel like um, we really made a big difference as far as the children are concerned, which is a wonderful thing. Um, you know, you start young like that, and I think that carries on. You know, I saw a lot of them that just brightened up, you know, when we were there helping their animals. In fact, several of them would come and ride their bicycles to our little clinic and hang out for the day just to watch us. And they were really proud. They wanted to come back with their pets, you know, and, and they were very proud of that. Because only the strong survive, And the dogs run wild, so they breed up. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to uh, the leader of this uh, Hopkins Belize Humane Society is Nancy Collier. Um, her husband, Les, and the, the two of them were the ones that, that we worked with the most. Because he's a veterinarian, I was able to, well, easily get a temporary license and I had no trouble getting the drugs into the country because he served as my liaison veterinarian. That relieved a lot of, of anxieties and, and pressures because uh, my uh, family and friends assured me they did not want to have to come and get me out of Belizean jails. <laughs> The other people that we met that were associated with the, the Humane Society are a man named Michael Young, who was the person who, who donated the, the clinic space. And his office was next door. He would come by several times during the day and make sure that we had everything that we needed. In order for their efforts to be sustainable, I think that they want to develop a visiting veterinarian program there. And I would like to help facilitate that. And if we can go a few times a year 
maybe we can talk to some other vets who might be interested in going a few times a year, then that may um, fill their needs to a certain extent and at least um, help somewhat with, with their, getting their animal overpopulation under control. We receive donations from a lot of um, a lot of our, our clients, some friends, um, some strangers even, just people who um, love animals or who uh, had traveled in, in those regions and understood what we were talking about. They had witnessed firsthand uh, how pitiful the, the dogs and cats are treated in those areas. I do want to thank everyone for, for their support. We had so much um, moral support and financial support and uh, support of animal products and supplies and uh, it just reinforced that, uh, that what we were doing was a good thing, that we weren't just crazy. <laughs> Baby